So I uh, wake up in my younger body and it's 2003 and what's happening at that time, if my memory serves me right, Ben Affleck had filmed Daredevil and it came out that year and gave fans enough ammunition to want to have him shot when he was announced as Batman many years later. Lumi D had released that song and fooled everybody into thinking she could sing. And us in London, we had that London blackout in 2003 in August. Lots of things happened. However, in our little bubble of pro wrestling, one thing happened that was very, very significant and is something that we sometimes talk about. And that was Goldberg signing to WWE in 2003, just after WrestleMania 19, or at WrestleMania 19, it was announced. And he debuted the very next day and speared The Rock on Raw. And everybody was excited. You know, the long forgotten son of WCW, as well as Sting, the one WCW guy that we hadn't seen come in the invasion to join the WWE, the big star, the guy that we all put on the same level of superstardom as the Steve Austins and the Rocks and the Triple H's and the Undertakers in Goldberg had now finally found his way into the WWE, into McMahon land and business was about to pick up, right? I mean, this is the big star and all those numbers are going to go through the roof and those ratings are going to go back up and the house show attendance is going to go back up and the big money matches with Triple H and Brock Lesnar and Steve Austin and The Undertaker and Kurt Angle and Jericho and all of these people they were all there on the table to happen and Goldberg was going to go through a career rejuvenation and once again be the biggest star in all of wrestling However, it didn't quite work out like that. Much like the invasion before it, it just kind of tapered off and did not hit the levels that people had expected and had anticipated. Much like the signing of Scott Steiner, which did not work out so well, it just kind of tapered off. And not too many people really talk about as to why that happened and why things worked out in the way that they did. And nobody really touches on the fact that Goldberg didn't sign after year after his year was there. Well, God, that make any sense? No one really touches on the idea that Goldberg did not want to sign after his contract came up. And let's touch on why those things didn't work out. So let's go back. Goldberg signs, debuts, Feud of the Rock. Two of the biggest stars, that's the big one, that's one of the big matches right away. And immediately I started noticing the cracks. Uh, in the segments with The Rock, The Rock was not so much a heel, he was hilarious, he was funny. He was so hilarious and entertaining and funny that fans started to not boo him and started to cheer him. Then they did that segment with Goldberg putting on Goldust's wig, do you remember that? Jeez. Uh, which did not work for him because that's not the kind of person you do those kind of comedy skits with. Then there was this segment where Goldberg looked pretty stupid when he was running after The Rock, do you remember? And then he went in the car and then he drove off and then The Rock appeared from behind the camera all cool as a cucumber and it just made Goldberg look like an absolute dimwit, do you remember that? And uh, then they had the match and Goldberg had to spear him three times and destroy him. But the fact is the fans were more on the Rock side than they were on Goldberg's side. Then the next month on Judgment Day he wasn't even on the pay-per-view. He feuded with Christian I think for about three weeks. And they had a cage match but that wasn't even on the pay-per-view. Uh, and then other things had started to change. Like they changed his music and they gave a WWE version of the Goldberg theme which a little bit took away from the, the, the specialness of Goldberg. Uh, you also look into the fact that um, Linda McMahon did a conference call and actually said that Goldberg had been a disappointment. And that is six weeks in to his uh, signing with the company. So already he was kind of labelled a disappointment very early on. Then what happened after that? He had a feud with Chris Jericho. And again, in that feud with Chris Jericho, if you actually go back and you watch the promos and the segments on Raw and uh, on pay-per-view, Jericho actually comes off like a babyface when you hear about it. Jericho made the challenge, 
Jericho wanted to fight Goldberg in WCW. Goldberg laughed at him and called him a joke. And then it never happened. And in a way, who are you going to side with? Jericho or Goldberg? You're going to side with Jericho because he comes off as sympathetic. Uh, then you think about the um, actual feud itself. And again, another feud where Goldberg kind of looks a bit stupid. And it's like... The fans aren't getting behind Goldberg in the way that you think that they would. Then you fast forward to um, SummerSlam, and there was rumours that Goldberg wasn't even going to be in the main event of SummerSlam, they were going to do Kane and Triple H, but then they go with the big one, the Goldberg-Triple H feud, and everybody knows that there's some personal history. They had a confrontation back in the day, and they didn't necessarily like one another, and they were going to touch on that a little bit, and you could feel that tension there, and the, the stare-downs, and in the promos, Goldberg challenges him, they build up to it, they announce it as the main event, Hunter gets injured, they change the main event, they make it an elimination chamber, and for the first time in a long time, Goldberg actually started to look like the Goldberg that I remember in WCW. He was smashing people, he was destroying people, he looked like a killer, he looked like an absolute wrecking ball. Actually, let me change that because I don't want any comparisons to Miley Cyrus. He looked like an absolute wrecking machine, uh, just spearing people left and right. It looked awesome. It was the Goldberg that I remember in WCW before the heel turn. Goldberg actually looked like the guy. It was awesome. And uh, they had the Elimination Chamber match, and he speared everybody and eliminated everybody. And for the first time, I actually felt like the WWF, WWE trained to hate WCW wrestling fans were on Goldberg's side and then it was down to Goldberg and Triple H and Hunter clips him with a hammer that's the only move he does in the match and then beats him one two three then they beat him down afterwards and I kind of felt like the life came out of myself and many of the fans after that SummerSlam match and everyone was like oh no 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 there's a justification we need to have a one on one match with Goldberg and Triple H are unforgiven and we'll add a stipulation in it just to make the fans even more interested but by the time they had got there fans were already deflated and I want to touch on some things that I think people have touched on but not enough and touch on some other things first of all before Goldberg had come back to WWE, or gone to WWE, should I say, what people forget is that Goldberg had lost quite a lot of career momentum in WCW. I already did a video, and I already talked about the time I felt that WCW was done, and that was when they turned Goldberg, their meal ticket, into a villain, and then 10 weeks later turned him back into a babyface, and how it was already too little, too late. I felt that that was one of the factors. WCW was a damaged brand. They turned their biggest star heel. It didn't work out. And then after that, Goldberg was pretty much a damaged star and had a damaged aura. And he lost that match, I think, to what was it, Luger and that little short midget Sarge guy. And really, after that, Goldberg was just not the same performer. The, 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 pres the, the momentum wasn't there. And he was off television for a very, very long time. There was rumblings about whether or not he would go back to W, or whether he'd go to the WWE. And you also have to take into account that the WWF fans had been trained for years to hate anything that was WCW. And that, to me, was two factors that already were working against Goldberg. Now, you've won the fucking war. You've won. The Civil War is over. Fucking bring this guy in. Make lots of money. Instead, they kept highlighting all his flaws. Something that you don't do. As Paul Heyman says, hide the weaknesses, accentuate the strengths. And I felt with WWE, they kept telling everybody where he was weak. Oh, well, he can't do long promos. Oh, well, he can't work matches more than 12 minutes. Oh, well, he's not particularly good at taking care of wrestlers. Oh, he's not particularly good at selling. Oh, he can't wrestle a more scientific style. Oh, he can't wrestle WWE main events. Well, who cares? Nobody knew that until you had brought him in and you kept having all your wrestlers tell people that publicly. You want to talk about fans getting smart to the business, fans getting smart to this. WWE 
alerted and made fans aware of Goldberg's flaws over and over and over and over and over and over again. They would not do that to Triple H. They would not do that to Brock Lesnar. They would not have done that to Kurt Angle or Eddie Guerrero or anybody else that was kind of retrained in some senses as WWE people or accepted as WWE people with WWE colors painted on them. But when it's a guy from another company, and we know this throughout history, they will highlight every single flaw that that person has. Just look at Sting versus Triple H at WrestleMania. It still goes on to this day. Um, but yeah, they just highlighted this man's flaws all the time making him look stupid, doing things to just completely F with him. And then the other comment, and I remember one of their guys made this comment about, oh, well, we don't have a roster of 300 guys to feed wins for Goldberg to get him over. No shit, you don't. However, you could have kind of carefully constructed a plan where Goldberg wins the majority of his matches, not all of them. He wins the majority of his matches, you keep him strong, you keep him re relevant, you don't tamper with the formula where it's perfect, maybe where there's some flaws, you work on there, you rebuild the aura, and then you, it's off to the races. Instead, you know, of course, of course he's on this contract, right? Uh, and that was another thing, they made that public. Oh, he's on this part-time contract, oh, don't know, he's not a lifer. They were saying these things to fans, to make fans not like him, so of course, Fans are already going to have their backs against the wall with the things that they're telling them. But they're saying it would never have worked. Well, look at what they've done with Brock Lesnar since he's been back with the company. Granted, he lost to John Cena. Granted, he had that boring match with Triple H at WrestleMania. But the fact is, when they reheated Brock Lesnar in the summer of 2013 with the CM Punk match then destroying the Big Show with his bare hands, then beating The Undertaker, and then destroying John Cena. After that SummerSlam last year, Brock Lesnar was considered an absolute killing, white, male, incredible Hulk, living form monster after that. And they could have done the same thing with Goldberg, who was on a slightly similar contract. They could have done that, but they didn't. Uh, I definitely felt that there was some intentional sabotage there to make it not work. And I do feel that they they were not in touch with the audience and what the audience wanted and how to get the audience on Goldberg's side. And then obviously when it looked like things were gonna work at the SummerSlam pay-per-view, they didn't pull the trigger. And instead they had that one-on-one -on -one match at Unforgiven and fans were not blown away by it at all. And then after that, what happened? He, uh, he was the champion for two months, but let's be honest, who cared? Nobody cared. Uh, they were already kind of letting us know that Goldberg is going to be out of the picture. Uh, and then the one thing that could have salvaged and made fans excited was the Lesnar and Goldberg match. We all know how that turned out. But to be honest with you, I do think, and you know there's a lot of criticisms about Goldberg's attitude towards the end. I do feel that had they not fucked with Goldberg in the way that they'd done, had they not tampered with Goldberg in the way that they had done, maybe the result on the Goldberg side of things may have turned out much, much better. But unfortunately, it didn't. And really, they should have gotten two years out of Goldberg, one year on Raw, one year on SmackDown, do a big match with him in Undertaker, a big match with him in Angle. Um, you know, there was a lot of opportunities. And then unfortunately, with the way they used him and the fact that he was a WCW guy painted with strong, WCW colors we can't have that and they just made the guy look like a complete clown and of course Goldberg is considered a, uh, a disappointment when he was in the WWE and uh, it's not surprising when you look into all of those factors as to why it did not work out anyways I'm gonna stop I'm gonna have a sip of water and I'm going to upload this video I'm hoping to learn and add some new things into these videos to make them a little bit more interesting and a bit more colourful and have a bit more pizzazz. But let me know what you felt. If you ever witnessed the Goldberg run of WWE in 2003 into 2004, how do you feel about that run? I know there are some people who felt that run was very successful. I beg to differ. But I would love to hear from those people. I'd love to hear from people with different perspectives as to why the Goldberg run didn't work out. I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to upload this video. Jake Reinhardt, Project Hawkeye is definitely coming. I'm warning you right now, it's coming this week. Guys, 
take care if you haven't already share if you haven't already thumbs up and if you haven't already comment down below let me know peace